33 years in the oil field, um, eight years as a firefighter in Houston. Uh, I've always cooked for large, large groups of people, and I've been cooking since I was 10 years old with my grandma and my mom. And the oil just kind of went down, and I decided that I love to cook. So here I am. It's just that simple. After 33 years in the oil field, I left to be at home. It, it was a life on the road. So I came back home every night, and I'm doing what I love now. So that's how wow. it happened. That's amazing. So what was, how did you decide to, um, so did you open the food truck first or did you actually have the, the catering business? What, what steps did you take? So I did. The, the, the first step was having a food truck built. Um, so three years ago, the truck was built and I've been, you know, me and my family, I say I, me and my family have been operating the food truck ever since. And along the way, being every food truck is required to have a commissary um, by the health department. So a commissary is a place where you can dump your spent frying oil, you can dump your gray water, you can fill up with potable water, you can store, um, you know, different foods. That's a commissary, and obviously we were required to have a commissary, and our commissary was this this uh, catering shop called Caterall that's been in business for 20 years. And about a year and a half into the food truck business, the previous owner had approached me and asked me if I was interested in buying her catering company, and it, it just fell into place. It was a great option for us because the food truck business and the catering business complement each other very well. So a year ago, last week, we bought the catering company and you know we, we have Caterall LLC and Cajun On The Go, which is the food truck part of our company. So we have both now. Oh, well, congratulations. That's amazing. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, maybe what you do on a daily basis. Like what's your day look like? Uh, well, so make, make no mistake, if, if any of you are interested in starting up a food truck business, it is a lot of hard work. Don't kid yourself. We, we work long hours. We're up early in the morning and we're up late at night. Most of our day consists of ordering products, prepping our food, cooking, and then at the end of the day or, or prior to the event, actually driving the truck to the event and serving it. That's the food truck side. The catering side is a little bit different in respect that we don't, you know, we really don't cook on location for our catering company. Everything's cooked in our commercial kitchen here when we cater an event and then we bring a staff to that location and, you know, we put everything in chafers, keep it warm and serve it with our staff. But they're long, busy days, so I just don't want any of you to uh, misunderstand that this business is hard work and long hours. You were saying that you do most of your cooking there at the, your catering business. Um, so how do you keep everything warm? Like, if you were just going to use your food truck, do you have your food truck set up to uh, handle all that? Yeah, you bet. I'll, I'll give you a quick tour of the truck and you can see what equipment I have in here. Let me uh, blow my end up so I can see what I'm showing you. Okay, we have, you know, when you when you first walk in the door, can you guys see the, the countertop with the heat lamps right now? Yes, we can. Okay. Inside this truck is a full kitchen with as much equipment as most restaurants. Okay, I have two full-size refrigerators, a full-size freezer in the truck. I have two 30-pound fryers. Can you see those right there? Yeah, very nice. The lids are cut. The, the, the lids are on the fryers right now because when the truck's in motion, this keeps the oil from splashing out. Okay, so I have these custom lids that go over the fryers. You can see the baskets. And then can you all see the griddle here? Yes, it looks like it's cooked a few hamburgers. It has. It's cooked a lot of stuff. Then we have an oven here. Can you all see that? Nice. Very nice. Okay, and then we have Allie. Can y'all see Allie? 
<laughs> yes, sir. Okay. And then we have the, the six burner range. Can y'all see that with the pots? Two big um, ranges here. That's what I cook all my jambalaya, my gumbo, my egg two phase in. When we do a truck event, I want y'all to know, you know, we do cook all of this food on site at their location from the truck. When it's a truck oh, event. Okay. The catering side is all cooked inside of our catering business. You'll, you'll also notice here, do y'all see these pipes coming down that I've got my hand on? Yes, what are those? So that's the vent hood system in the truck that you're seeing right here. So that exhausts all the steam and everything that comes off when we're cooking. That's, that's, that's required by code. And these pipes here are our fire suppression system. I have, I have more fire suppression in this truck than most restaurants in town. Oh, wow. That's because we have all these open flames in the truck. So that's required. Then back here, you know, there's some shelving. And then, of course, you're going to see my, my three, three base sink here. I'll lift the, the covers off. We rinse, we sanitize, okay? That's, that's how you're supposed to do it. And then there's a uh, hand-washing sink there. Do you all see that little sink? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, then turning back, here's, here's one of my refrigerators. Can you see that? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all, it's all wrapped in our logo. And then let's see, on the shelf here, can you all see the rice cooker, the yes. microwave? Yeah. 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 Eight bay steam tray, steam table. So that's how we keep everything warm once it's cooked. The boudin, the jambalaya, the gumbo, the A2 phase, all of that stuff is mostly kept in here to stay warm while we're serving out the truck. And of course, here's the serving window. Oh, nice. And then coming over here is our sandwich prep unit. You have oh, mustard, mayo, ketchup, and all that kind of stuff. And then when you open up the top here, that's where your lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, and all that, when we're making po' boys or sandwiches, we operate right here on this little sandwich prep unit. And then out the window with the food. And then next to that, we have, can y'all see another refrigerator, another freezer? And outside, we have these big compartments here, and that's where our propane bottles are kept. Most okay. of my appliances inside the truck run off of propane. Very few of them actually are electric. That's kind of a quick tour of the truck, and I'll turn it back this way, and you can kind of get a view from where I'm standing looking back in the truck. Can y'all see that? Yes, yeah. sir. So um, how big is a truck? What's the measurements of, the, of your cooking space there? So the truck is 35 feet long, it's 13 feet tall, and it's about nine feet wide. It, it's one of the largest food trucks in the country, actually. Wow. And so did you order it through a special company? Yes. So there he is. Let me see if I can find their little site here on my... Can you guys see that logo right now that my finger's pointing to? Yes, yeah. sir. Cruising Kitchens is the name of the company. Cruising Kitchens is out of San Antonio, and they built this truck for us. Um, highly recommend them. If uh, any of you are looking at, at building a truck, I would go with them. You know, we have we went with another guy. We went with another company to start, and uh, we ended up losing an awful lot of money with that company. They went bankrupt. Oh, no. I say that to say this. If you're going to build a food truck, make sure you do your research on the company that's building it. You don't want to go through what we did. Oh, mercy. So, do you mind us asking about how much you could spend on a food truck? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, you can spend anywhere from, you know, $40,000 from a basic trailer all the way up to about 250 grand on wow. a truck. This truck itself cost $160,000 as it sits. Well, that's a huge investment. So we will come see you and eat some food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do. And, you know, on the outside of the truck, I didn't show you all that just because I don't know if it, it would work very well with the phone. But we have a 50-inch flat screen on the outside. We have a nine-foot awning that rolls out. So when people are waiting on their food, 
we actually have the basketball games, the football games, the baseball games, or whatever else, you know, might everybody be interested in while they're waiting on their food to come out. It kind of keeps people entertained, and it helps to draw a crowd to the truck when we're at these events. We also have an awesome sound system on the outside. We play a lot of Cajun music, a lot of Christian music, a lot of country music. So it, it's great for private parties and events. Oh, that's fun. I thought it was a lot of fun to come up with your concept, too. So we're impressed with the television on the outside. That's that's pretty neat. So is it, like, um, covered up? I mean, did you have to buy a special seat yeah. for a mobile something or another? Let's see if you guys can see this. Can you all still see me? Yeah. Okay, I'm walking down right now outside the truck. I'll show you where the TV is. See if y'all can see it. All right, I'm. Y'all are looking up at the truck right now. Hope. Nice. See that compartment right here? Yes, sir. We see it. Well, if I open up that compartment, my 50-inch flat screen is underneath that compartment. Hi, oh that's pretty sweet. And you you can see the awning, the white the white awning on top. That I have a button that I push, and that rolls out nine feet. So it actually provides good shade to be able to see the TV when there's sunlight. <laughs> That's awesome. Very and then, nice. of course, there's the, let's see, there's the serving window that I was just talking to you all from. And then, let's see, this, see this silver tank right here I'm pointing to? That's my freshwater tank, and I have another tank on the outside, on the other side, that's for my gray water. In other words, all the water that I've washed my dishes with and all that kind of stuff goes into a separate tank. And then, let's see, right here, do you guys see this generator? Yeah. A generator? Yep. Do y'all see that? I'm pointing to it. So yeah. that's 11,000 kW Onan diesel generator. It powers the whole truck. I don't, I don't need electricity or water or anything wherever I go. I'm completely self-contained and completely self-sufficient. Fantastic. Wow. It's a beautiful truck. Well, thank Very you. Nice. Okay, so give us your address again where you're set up so we can come visit sometime. Our business address is 348 Alves Lane. So that, that's where our catering business is, our commercial kitchen. Now, to find the truck, you'll need to go to our Facebook page, Kitchen on the Go. Okay. That's, that's Kitchen on the D-A, go, G-E-A-U-X. So how do you find your places where you're going to park the truck and, and do that kind of stuff? So believe it or not, now that we've been in business for three years, people call us. So we don't we don't have to look too much anymore to, uh, to find work. They're always calling us, wanting the truck to go to their businesses or their events. So really, there's this very little work for us to do as far as finding a place for the truck to go. And, you know, this past year, we had the contract with Whitewater Amphitheater. So oh, we, nice. catered, we catered for all the artists, Miranda Lambert, Willie Nelson, all those folks. We catered all their food, and our truck was out there serving all the concert crowd for the whole year. Oh, how fun. That's yeah. great. Very interesting. So, um, is are you parked every day somewhere, or is it like the weekends? How often do you get your truck out? So, we're, you know, I'd say the truck's out three times a week, and it would be out more, but with our busy catering schedule, too, that, that consumes a lot of our staff. When we're catering events, we uh, on some days, we just don't have the staff to work the truck and to cater multiple events in the day. So, Oh. Our truck schedule is really dependent on our catering schedule, if that makes sense. Yes. But tomorrow, you know, tomorrow, if any of you are around, New Braunfels, we'll be at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church from 4 to 9 p.m. tomorrow evening. Okay. And we'll be serving gumbo, red beans, rice, and sausage, and potato soup. How fun. Yes. All right. So that's near the square, is, is it? It is. It's actually the next street behind the square. So, you know, if you're familiar with McAdoo's. Yes, sir. You just, if you're facing McAdoo's, you turn to the left, you're staring at St. Spear Paul Catholic Church. We actually have someone who does uh, or is interested in, in having a catering business or a food truck someday. And if that's Claire. I was going to have Claire ask you a question. Um, describe some skills and traits an employee would need to possess to be successful in this career. Number one is you really 
need to be a social butterfly. You uh, you really need to get along with people. You need to be able to talk to people, and uh, you just need to love people because we we interact on so many people on a daily basis, and that's really a big part of your business. People are going to remember the service you provide. You know how nice you were how accommodating you were. Well, number one, you need to be a people person to be in this business. Number two, you need to know how to cook. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of food truck companies that don't make it because they don't have a unique food. So I'm, I'll tell you this, if, if you're thinking about opening up a food truck, if it's you know, a, a taco truck or a barbecue truck or something like that. There are thousands of those out there, and you're going to really have a huff, tough time um, with that kind of a venue. So I would say find something that you're really good at cooking and turn that into your specialty. You know, for us, it's our it's our Cajun food. There's, there's no genuine Cajun food in this town except for us. And, and my recipes are three and four generations old in my family. So, so I took that and I capitalized on that. And we offer something really unique. So, you know, as far as the skill set goes for that, you need to be very good at cooking whatever you want to specialize in. And you need to be very good under pressure. I don't know if you guys, you guys ever go to Wassel Fest? Yes, sir. I have been. Okay, well, our truck has been at Wassel Fest for the last three years, and some of you may have seen our truck. We've had a line that was two to three hours long to get to the truck. Oh, my now, God. You're in the truck, and you've got a, you know, a hundred-yard line coming to your window. That there, There's a certain element of stress involved with that. So if you're not good at dealing with stress, you're not going to do well in this business. You, you can't get flustered. You can't get excited. You just have to uh, remain calm, do your thing in the truck, get the food out, and move on to the next person. I, I've seen a few people that we've tried working in the truck that have just broken down into tears oh in the heat battle, if you will, because the stress was just too much. You know, there was 20 orders up on the window. We were backed up, and people were just coming and coming and coming. And, you know, it, it's not a good environment for a person that, that doesn't like stress. <laughs> so you need to be good under pressure. You need to be very good with people. And you need to be very good at cooking. That, that I would say that's the top three. And it sounds like you you need to be able to do some homework as far as getting your business set up and all that kind of thing. So so what was it like dealing with uh, um, like the county, New Braunfels, the health department, that kind of stuff to get your life and whatnot? So a lot of people struggle with that. But for us, it was a piece of cake, and I'll tell you why. It's all about doing your homework. If you're going to have a truck or a trailer built, the number one thing I'd recommend to you is calling the health department and talking with those folks and ask them the requirements for doing what you're going to do. And once you have those requirements, you can build your truck to those requirements. And that's exactly what we did. At, at Cruising Kitchens in San Antonio, Cameron Davies, the owner, and I had a, had a lengthy meeting. We had a couple meetings with the health department. Department, and we figured out right away what the health department was going to require of us and we built our truck around that so when when our truck was finished we drove it right off you know the location at cruising kitchens where it was built right to the health department parking lot and had it inspected that next day and it was built per the code for the city of new Braunfels. so we never had a problem and by the way the city of new Braunfels has one of the most stringent um requirements of all in the state so if your truck's built for the city of new Braunfels, there's a good chance you're going to be able to work your truck anywhere and so did you have to take um any kind of health health classes or you know something to get licensed Absolutely. So, you know, you'll definitely need your food handler certification and you can take that online through the city of New Braunfels and you'll also need your food management certification. Those are the two that you'll need. Uh, describe some of the most rewarding aspects this career offered. 
The biggest reward for me and my family is is we look at this not only as a business but but kind of as a service. So, you know, there there are certain businesses and organizations in town that that ask us for donations and ask us to help people in need, and we we get to do that with the truck. So for us, the biggest reward is helping our community. The the second best reward in this business is getting those emails and those reviews online that say, man, this was the, this food was amazing. It was the best food I've ever had in my life. And you can go on our website and our Facebook page and you can see all our comments and our reviews from customers. So that is extremely rewarding to know that, that you've, you know, made somebody happy through your food. The most challenging aspect of getting your business started, what would you say that was? The most challenging part of this is probably maintaining your your customer base um you know it can be difficult dealing with the public i'll give you an example there was one event we were at and we had a customer come up to the window and they ordered chicken and sausage gumbo so we we served them chicken and sausage gumbo well the next day we got a, a review with a one, one of our only ones we've ever gotten in three years. And the, the review was simply this, that there was no shrimp in the chicken and sausage gumbo. Well, that's because chicken and sausage gumbo doesn't come with shrimp, okay? Oh so you're going to have to deal a little bit with that, and that can be challenging. Working with, with the public sometimes can be challenging. Um, people have, you know, a different outlook on what you're doing and and you've just got to you just got to be open to them and you've got to be open to serving you know it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a service mentality in this business the customer is always right remember that and that that holds true for many situations so you want to come into this with a servant's heart because Serving the public can be challenging. You know, there'll be people that that uh, get a little aggravated sometimes when they're waiting for food. I'll give you an example. Some people uh, bring Wassel Fest again. Some people waited two hours to get our food at Wassel Fest. But you know what? After they waited and ate our food, they came back and they said, you know what? I was aggravated. I waited two hours to get to your truck, but after we ate, it, it was worth the wait and I tell you that is the end goal okay for you if someone's got to wait you want to make sure that whatever you serve them is worth the wait okay so so dealing with the public is is a can be challenging secondly is maintaining a staff and working all these crazy hours you know we were we were set up at the poorhouse for a couple of years and those hours were from 4 p.m. to 1 and 2 in the morning every Friday and Saturday so that was really tough you know you, you work those long hours on a Friday night and you get back up the next day and you got to do it all over again and then Sunday you know you wake up you go to church and then you do it all over again as a family these long hours in the food service can be probably the biggest challenge you'll face Long hours, long, hard hours. <laughs> and they train staff to help you. Are teenagers allowed to work around the fryers and that kind of thing inside the food truck? Yeah, sure. You know, we have we have two two teenagers in our family. They go to uh, New Braunfels, and they work on the truck with us just about every event. It's, it's like anything else. As long as you're not a minor, you know, you, you, can, you can work here, but... With any company, there's a certain level of training. So, you know, before you walk into any workplace, it's it's my responsibility to identify the hazards for you. Okay, and once I've identified those hazards, it's it's also my job to tell you how to prevent from being harmed by those hazards. So, with anything and with any company, there's hazards at every workplace. There's hazards in that classroom right now that y'all are in. And as long as you recognize those hazards and know how to prevent yourself from being injured from those hazards, everything's good. So that's a big part of it, working anywhere. If you're thinking about getting into this business, I want to encourage you to cook your food, feed your friends, feed your relatives. Don't use your truck or your trailer as your testing grounds. 
you know, it, it would be bad to spend forty thousand dollars on up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars to figure out that no one likes your food. Okay? <laughs> So make sure you feed your family, your friends, and you're going to want some honest feedback. Because before you make an investment like this, you're going to, you're going to want to know if people want to eat your food and if they're going to come back and eat it. So I, I want to give you all that advice. Believe me, that's very sound advice for any of you thinking about doing this. Well, Mr. Judas, we wish you um, great success with your truck in the future, and we hope to see you. Thank you all for having me. I really enjoyed it. Okay.